chronoscope to view time and the novel approach of taking something that is unapologetically vintage inspired and combining it with a modern twist. The new Omega chronoscope is an interesting case study because it is an entirely original watch. New case, new dial, new bracelets, new movement. The questions we can ask are things like, is this the right direction for the watch to be going? Is the brand understanding what the Speedmaster is represented as? Are they trying to segue themselves into an entirely different category? And where did these inspirations come from? I find the watch interesting because there's such a clear distinction between the dial and the case and bracelet, which is something we don't see very often with watch brands. There is more of a harmonious relationship with a lot of products that are produced, but Omega tends to like to push the boundaries. And we've been seeing this quite often with some of their modern pieces, like the new Seamaster 300 they brought out, how they took a watch dial that was clearly out of the 1930s and attached it to a watch design that was from the 50s. Doing something similar in this category, where we now see a dial that is clearly from the 1940s attached to a case that began in the 60s and, and moved onwards. The first thing we can do is to talk about where this inspiration might have come from, and I believe this was in part thanks to Patek Philippe and also Longines. These two brands are doing exceptional work in their own separate categories, Patek being one that loves to grab past inspirations and combining them into a modern piece, and Longines creating a more direct, modern take of their classic pieces, reintroducing classic pieces with modern scale and componentry. We should also bear in mind that when we look to the history of Omega and Longines, they share a storied past together, which is something that will be addressed when we get into the inspiration. To begin, we have to look to the inspirations behind this new dial. And the Second World War is a good place to start. When we look to the chronographs of the late 30s and the early 1940s, watches that were issued primarily to officers of the army and the navy. These pieces were some of the most beautiful chronographs ever made. Omega chronograph references like the CK987, the CK2077, and many watches that fall under the umbrella of the reference 33.3 in the chronograph category. We find that those dials, those either mil-spec or civilian models were in vogue at the time with many different color combinations, different typefaces. They truly were inspirational designs for their time, not only offering a simple chronograph complication, but at the same time features like a telemeter scale, a pulsometer, scales on a watch that today are a bit anachronistic, but are still great conversation starters. These were the officers' watches back in the day because they were so technically competent. They had all of these scales. They had the feature of a very reliable chronograph. And we see that through this time, when we look at brands like Universal, Genève, Longines, they all shared similar dial manufacturers, case manufacturers. So a lot of these watches were assembled in different places, and their designs were cross-pollinated more often than not. We notice the typefaces and colors have been shared across these watches, and this is something that is common knowledge today. I cannot emphasize enough how beautiful those watches were. And when we think about the size and scale of them back in the day, you know, standard size and issue was between 33 and 35 millimeters, pushed all the way up to sometimes 39 and even 41, depending on the watch's classification and its purpose. And the reason why this is worth sharing is because it's clear a lot of this has been extrapolated and put into the new Speedmaster as a reference. They've definitely done their homework when designing the beauty of this dial. And off the top of my head, the only watch that I can think of that has a similar scale, aesthetic and inspiration is the Breguet Classique, a chronograph they introduced with what they call a snail shell telemeter scale. So chalking all of this up, we could say that Omega is taking inspiration on one hand from brands like Longines, who are creating excellent reissues, modern takes on classics, and a brand like Patek Philippe who blends vintage inspirations and aesthetics with a modern touch. And the end result is a watch that we see clearly looks to be one that shares a dial from the 1940s, a case design from the 1960s. Observing this watch, the dial is beautiful, and I think it's both the greatest strength but also the greatest shortcoming with the overall package of this piece. It's been given the name of Chronoscope Coaxial Master Chronometer Chronograph with a tachymeter, telemeter, and pulsometer. I mean, talk about a mouthful. It's a little bit excessive. It's not needed. The basic specifications of this watch is it's now 43 millimeters in diameter. I believe this was done not to just increase its overall presence, but to make those smaller dials a bit more legible, which makes sense. It uses a new Meta certified movement, the Caliber 9908, it's a hand-wound movement, 44 joules, 28,800 vibrations per hour. Also incorporating new movement decoration that Omega now calls arabesque Geneva striping. 
The criticism we could make about this movement is it looks fairly plain. I don't know if they took their inspirations from classic pocket watches or more of a Germanic styling when it comes to movement decoration and making. Or maybe this was done just to increase its overall durability, which would make a lot of sense since these movements are powerhouses. But these movements always get all the bells and whistles that we would expect, so there's nothing to really critique here. I guess, if anything, the decoration is nice, but a lot of us would have preferred to have seen a movement a bit more displayed, especially when it's a chronograph. Moving to the exterior, the case and the bracelet, there is a surprise. We now have a micro-adjusting clasp. I believe the idea of combining the old and the new was solely done to introduce this component. I think a lot of us have been looking forward to seeing how they would implement a micro-adjust system on the Speedmaster clasp, and they have done it very well. In typical fashion, the process of adjustment looks very easy, and if you've handled a Speedmaster or a Seamaster with a micro-adjust before, you'll know what it feels like. It's going to be a very simple and effective system, and hopefully this is going to be something we see transferred across the board to all of their Speedmasters. What cannot be understated is how beautiful the dials are. The color combinations, as well as just how everything's been spatially arranged, the use of applied numerals, the text usage, how it all lines up, how it does seem fairly cluttered but also looks spacious at the same time. The panda variant using red accents, the chronograph hand using red and white dashes in between, small red accents happening inside the subdials. We look to how they've used heat bluing for the hands and the numerals with some examples, how they've rhodium plated others, and how we get this distinct divide between something that looks old but also new. And when we look to how the dial has been done, we can see it's using a bicompax arrangement. The one subdial on the right hand side calculates both minutes and hours, something we have come to know pretty well when we look to the coaxial speedmasters already. If we look to the scales on the inside, I don't think you need a lecture on telemeters and pulsometers, but they are old school. And seeing them on a modern watch is quite exciting, because how often do we use tachymeter scales today? Would we say that a telemeter scale is more useful? Would a pulsometer be more useful? Would it not be best just to have all three? You're getting the opportunity here to experience basically every possible scale with a chronograph. So you are getting a package deal when you look to the dial. It's almost like a Swiss army knife of scales. And could we say that Omega is trying to set a trend here? The idea that other brands would hopefully one day follow in the same direction. Being able to offer a lot more with a chronograph than just three registers and a running seconds hand. By now you've probably seen the different material combinations and how well some work together. The all gold combination looks stunning. The panda dial, amazing. But the overarching question is, does this combination work or has Omega stepped a little bit too far across when we look to these two styles combined together? There is something about seeing this watch on the bracelet that I don't really get. I don't feel the same kind of connection that I should with a 1940s watch when I find a modern case and bracelet attached to it. And in order to remedy this, the solution is so simple. We can all understand now that the reason why this watch debuted with a professional case and bracelet was to highlight the new clasp adjustment system. Makes a lot of sense. It's also 43 millimeters in size. Increasing its presence on the wrist also makes a lot of sense. But if we were to just move that aside and think solely about expressing the value that the dial gives us, how could we do it better? I believe a complex dial needs a simpler case. What it allows then is for the attention to be focused solely on the dial and not to the external components. And when you have a bracelet on a watch like this that looks highly articulated, it takes the attention away from the dial. It doesn't feel like the dial is receiving enough attention, if you know what I mean. The simple process is instead of using the professional case, it's reverting back to using the CK2915 or the CK2988 case. The precursors, ones like we see on the Ed White, the first Omega in space. These straight cut liar lugs are beautifully done. They exercise a level of restraint without removing the attention away from the watch dial. In a few of these examples you might be seeing that I've played around with colorways and also just attaching the dial to this older case. And I believe there is more congruence when we look at this combination next to seeing it with a professional format. And to follow through with that 1940s, 1950s style, I went to the lengths of pairing it with a beads of rice bracelet, something that also feels period correct and specific. All of these models, whether using the new professional case or the more classic straight lug case, look excellent with leather straps. And I believe the overall aesthetics of these watches will serve you a lot better 
if they are worn on leather straps and not bracelets. It's one time when you can really sit back and appreciate the vintage styling that went into this piece. And I believe that the dial should speak more than the externals. Regardless, as an Omega enthusiast, I am always impressed to see them pushing the envelope, pushing boundaries, asking questions, testing the status quo. Can these inspirations go in different directions? It is so great to see that the Speedmaster is not a one-trick pony and still remains a platform and a basis to share new ideas and options. The question is, will aesthetics like this appeal to more enthusiasts? Will this bring new people into the hobby? Will people find the idea of combining seriously classic aesthetics with a modern case and dial? Will people find this approach appealing, A? And B, will this help the brand push their thought process and their inspirations further back in time, looking to ideas from the 40s and even earlier. They're great looking watches, definitely ones that will receive divided opinions and criticisms, but I also believe it's a release that shouldn't be ignored. After Action Report, it's a great looking watch. I was very confused when it was first released, seeing the case and dial and how it's paired. I still find it perplexing. I so wish they chose straight lugs instead of liar lugs, the modern take. It just makes a lot more sense going back to the old style. I mean, I'm wearing the old style. Those straight lugs are just so clean. They could have upped the size to 42 mils and kept it basic, keeping the dial at the center of attention. That's the most important part. And I don't know if the brand took that into account in the first place. The dials are beautiful, beautiful looking watches. It's also just great to see movements introduced every single month and the amount of effort that goes into creating these things, it's, it's crazy. But that's it. I mean, there were no real bloopers this time around, so sadly you, you stuck around for nothing. See you in the next one. These two brands are doing excellent work in their own. Is this even recording? I hope it is. Yes, it is. That's good.